Hi guys and welcome to another video on our YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'm going to cover Amazon Marketing Cloud. Now lately, I've seen a lot of hype about it. So for those of you who still don't know what it is, how does it look like? What are the basic functionalities? This video is for you. This is going to be an overview. So like you just had your had your Amazon Marketing Cloud account created and several instances created for your marketplaces. Now to define that you need an account level AMC Amazon Marketing Cloud created like on an account level for your brand. And then for each marketplace that you sell in, you need to have an instance. To have your Amazon Marketing Cloud created, you need to, to contact your Amazon representative who's assigned to you. If you if it's not assigned, then good luck. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you, but you can uh, contact Amazon Marketing Cloud support or raise the ticket and uh, off to that kind of journey. Um, after you have your Amazon, Amazon Marketing Cloud created, this is what it's going to look like. So at first it's going to be kind of confusing, but there's a, there are two ways that you can use Amazon Marketing Cloud. So like a pro or like a regular user, which is totally fine. Um, in this video, I'm going to completely um, make you not feel that uncomfortable because you're missing out. Uh, because it, you're not still, but as the time goes by, AMC is going to be one of the most important things for your account. So this is the or the basic uh, overview. So what you can see is that you can use these filters, and depending on what you want to accomplish, you can click each one of these and limit filter the appropriate whatever you need to do so is it analytics is it uh, an audience that you want to create is it for dsp or uh, only for sponsor brand or a mix then you will see a query ed editor here yeah instructional queries is that it's like a user interface type of creating a query a query is like um if you're not familiar with sql or sql queries you actually type it's like a programming language that you type your type the code and pull the data from the database so there's an option for you if you're familiar with that to write the query yourself and there are like instructional queries where you can just click what you want to accomplish and then add a few like it's it's a guided interface for that and you can use the mix for both then let's go through all of these and uh, let's uh, see one example and how to use it at the end. So uh, this is the instructional query tab. Then you can move on to query editor where you can. Now we have an error, an error because it's a, it's an empty query. You can browse through different options over here. Is it like something related to conversions? And whenever you find some field that you want to add to the editor you can you can type that definitely and you can also add it here add to editor or copy to clipboard or run a preview uh, when you hover over each of these fields you will get a detailed explanation on how to use it and what that data set represents next up is the solutions um, i skipped these uh, because I haven't been able to test that out, so I'm not going to bother explaining something I don't know. Uh, template analytics. This one is probably going to uh, one of your uh, most important things because there are some predefined analytics templates that you can use, like overlap or campaign groups, to determine how different campaign exposure groups work together to drive purchases. Um, uh, sponsor and DSP overlap. This is very interesting report because without AMC, if you run DSP and your sponsor ads, you actually cannot measure the impact of those two combined or separate. But with the, with AMC, you can run a report, an analytics report, and see how what was the actual outcome if somebody saw your different type of sponsor ads and if somebody along with that saw your dsp ad 
what is the conversion rate, what the click to rate, and all the other most important metrics. So you can browse through some of the basic templates like path to conversion, new to brand gateway ASINs. Gateway ASINs um, are called that way. So, but in a nutshell, it's the top ASINs that bring the most new to brand customer from from a brand. So that's a gateway ASIN. For example, if a, if a, if certain ASIN bring uh, is bringing you 80% of new to brand uh, buyers then that's a that's your gateway asin so and you can run a report to see which one is that uh without it's this is possible of, of course without the amc data but here you can you can have it with a few clicks uh, then you have audience overlap uh, to see if you have a few audiences and if they intersect on a certain um area or maybe uh, to discover additional audience that maybe you were not aware before that that you can actually use them and that your potential buyers are actually part of a certain audience time to conversion it, it's really interesting one i think um i'll try to find that for you there's a example how that looks like uh, it's also really really beneficial google had that like 10 years ago but finally we're seeing that on on amazon um, you can see that for example, after some uh, after somebody saw your ad, how quickly do they end up buying? Is it a minute? Is it 10 minutes, one day, seven days, 30 days, depending on the product, of course. So it, it's really useful report. So you see, so many, many things that you are not able to see anywhere else you can see in, in Amazon DSP. Uh, there are some paid features that amazon extended these paid features i think end of march it was like end of january now they extended that to to end of march um i haven't explored these but some of these are really interesting brand store insights going to be uh, paid and you can pause the this video and read what they uh, had he have here as, a, as an explanation there's an instance info and the talk to documentation that if you have enough time and knowledge, you can go through that. Now, this is a sandbox uh, environment, so not all of the uh, features are available because sandbox environment is like the environment where you can test a bunch of things without, uh, it's like a controlled environment. It's not a live account on any of the accounts that we manage. It's like a sandbox, just you, you can play there. I'm going to pause the video and find a few queries for you so you can see it in action. Okay, I've chosen this time to conversion instructional query. So for each instructional query, you will have like an, an overview here what they, uh, I mean, they're doing an okay job in explaining what you want to accomplish and how to do it. Um, so this template is has the limitation of 14 day attribution window so you need to wait for two weeks past the end of the campaign to run this query to capture or all conversions because so if you stopped your campaign today or or didn't stop but you're interested to see the data uh, on 24th of january you will have to wait additional two weeks before because of the attribution window for all possible conversions to appear as a reminder attribution window is that for example if somebody clicks your ad today they can end up buying in next 14 days and if they end up buying in that window of time that's going to be attributed to the ad view that they had the, the one uh, sorry not the view the, the ad click uh, and that's why you need to wait for additional 14 days moving on to the report you name the report you select the date range uh, you can go up to last 90 days uh, with this limitation of last two weeks, of course, you can assume those. Now you can copy some campaign IDs here to only see this report. And I think this is available from majority of the templates and queries that you run. You can run it on a campaign level if you skip this option to enter campaign IDs. And if you add certain campaign IDs, then it's only for those campaign IDs, which is which is great. You can generate the file for the campaign names and IDs here, so you can use it uh, quickly. So this is something that the query is going to look like when you when you run a successful query. And don't be discouraged if you have if you see a bunch of errors before your first query goes through. It happens all the time. Uh, you're not alone on that. So for example, you would see something like this. So this would be the campaign name. 
pulled from from a, by the report because it's tied to campaign ID and you will see like time to conversion purchases and total brand purchases. So this would be a golden information for you. This would uh, give you an information on your remarketing campaigns if you want to if most of people are buying within seven days of initial uh, of the last ad uh, uh, ad click then you will have your for example the marketing set to bid really heavily on those seven days uh, unfortunately we still don't have an option in sponsor ads to bid on like one day on the same day remarketing a set of frequency cap like i don't know see my ad up to 10, 10 times but still it's very it's very valuable information and some of the metrics uh, explanations are down there so you can pause this one too uh, now i'm going to move to the audiences and show you how audiences work because currently we find this audiences like the best uh, use case for amc so far okay for example let's go here so i've moved to instructional queries I hit audience filter and uh, let's do cart abandoners. So audience that added to cart but did not purchase. Additional variations are like uh, audiences who added to, to, a, to a wish list or, or registry um, or maybe those who saw the Amazon DSP campaign but not, a, not another one. So I'm gonna select the cart abandoners because it's a sandbox environment as i said you cannot choose an advertiser here so the I, I cannot create the audience but you'll get the picture now you can see you can set the of course select your your account that you're managing uh audience type you can set like a rule-based audience defined here or you can select a lookalike audience based on already existing audience and there are several different tiers of how broad you want to let system go so you can go like most similar one hover over here and it's going to be almost the same uh, with the same properties as already defined so depending on relevance and audience ge geography but most broad is going to be like huge so this is like up to 10 million and most similar one is only 1 million so but uh, to keep things yeah for, for this example cart abandoners if you take that sample audience and create a lookalike audience. So it's gonna be who, based on your cart abandoners, who are other people who, who buy on Amazon who could potentially be your cart abandoners. I don't know, potential buyers. Um, so you define the name of an audience and if you manage multiple accounts or have a multiple brands, I recommend, due to the limitations that I will show you, I would recommend to add also the brand name here. So. Uh, I would call this AMC uh, audience like brand, whatever, Lego, then something like um, cart, abandoners, and now I, I usually like to add like the date range, last 30 days. You, you can add a description if it's, Description is very useful because sometimes you will have multiple of these very often. And if there are certain types of uh, certain specifics, like if, if it's limited to the certain ASINs or certain um, portfolio of products, like, like part of your catalog, then you want to add that as a, as a description so you don't mix it up. Uh, there's an option to, option to auto adjust date, uh, but I just keep it usually at last 30 days. And if you want, you can select only for certain ASINs, but if not, it's just going to be like all cart abandoners, which is not that precise because you don't want to add audience of uh, somebody who saw your, you, if you're selling a, a football, you don't want to add your cart abandoners to, to the campaign that sells not only footballs, but I don't know, pencil cases or whatever else. So try to be as specific as you can here but with the limitation that audience cannot be used in a sponsor ads and campaign manager if it's less than 2000 people so that's a limitation so this may not work if you add additional asins to include this may not work if your account is not that big or if you don't have uh, so many people in your audience of card abandoners 
if that's also a limitation you will see that only after you create the audience amazon is gonna check the audience and create it it goes pretty quick uh, like um, um, 30 minutes an hour depending on the audience size um, and if it's too small then what you can do you can just increase the the date range you can go up to 365 days so that's that's in like an, uh, a workaround then you hit create audience and what's going to happen when you create that audience you need to wait for a few days typically 48 hours or two days until that audience as an option uh, appears in your campaign manager and this is how it's going to look like after a few days so don't get worried if you don't see it that that quickly so once you go to your campaigns under the bid adjustments these to be placement adjustments now bid adjustments you will see an option aside from all placements and amazon business placements you will see additional option for audiences and there you're gonna see only all shoppers and the stats for all shoppers and you will have an options to change audience now the reason i told you how to add the brand name there because there's a certain limitation when you click change audience you will have an option to don't increase bids for an audience and increase bids on a custom audience is created in amc when you hit that you need to choose an audience so take a look at this one it, it's crazy it, it's like completely out of we don't even know what's happening which audience is for is for what cart abandoners i was expecting that it's going to be visible somehow is it for this marketplace or that marketplace so i made a mistake so i didn't name them correctly um so pay attention and this decide how to call your audiences always so you choose an audience and you add your um modifier here you can see that it's not something big of a deal but we saw that after we increased bit adjustments to only to cart abandoners we made uh two sales and a cost is pretty decent so that's the use case this is how you wanna use your audiences and still uh the limitation is that you can use only one custom audiences audience created in amc per campaign which is I don't know you can avoid um work around around that is that you can create additional campaigns and uh for your for all of your audiences and you can segment them out by that uh so that's amc um very often what you can experience is that you're just when you add audience and you add your bid adjustment modifier you're just gonna hear crickets nothing's gonna happen um try increasing your bid adjustments go up to 200 300 400 increase as much as you can let it run for several days and see if uh, you see something happening and yeah that's basically it uh, enroll in amc as soon as you can and experiment with that it's going to bring you many many benefits thank you guys for watching see you in the next video bye bye